Hey, I'm Greg Gifford, the Vice President of Search at US-based SEO agency Wikimotive. In this eighth lesson in the local SEO course, we're gonna be talking about Google Posts and questions and answers, two features of Google My Business. Sure, we could have included these in the last lesson on Google My Business, but we're trying to keep these lessons short and easy to digest. And if I'd included them, I would have had to ramble on and on, even longer and longer, and you'd start to wonder when I'd ever stop talking, and maybe even start to wonder if you should just bail on the lesson, which we definitely don't want to happen because this info is really awesome. Whew, that was tough. Seriously though, these features are powerful, and most businesses and marketers don't even use them at all, so we felt like it was worth dedicating an entire lesson to these elements alone. Let's start with Google Posts. Posts consist of an image or video paired with a short text description up to 1,500 characters. Google has moved them around a few times since they were released, but right now, as we record this video, they show up at the bottom of your GMB profile panel on desktop searches. On mobile searches, they show in the blended search results and under the posts link of your GMB profile. In both places, Google displays a thumbnail view where the image is cropped and the first few lines of text are displayed. When the user clicks on the post, the full image and text description are displayed. On desktop, it looks like this. Posts should always be promotional. Sharing social fluff just doesn't work here. Remember, your GMB profile is your new home page and it's typically the first impression that you're making with customers. You should be using posts to wow them and convince them to click over to your site. Posts will also help you stand out from competitors. Remember, most businesses aren't using posts and we know that local customers do research and they look around for local options. If you're using posts and your competitors aren't, you'll stand out and be more likely to convert those customers. Posts stay live for seven days, unless you use one of the post templates that includes a date range. If you have more than one post live at a time, they'll be displayed in a carousel with the most recent post showing first. You should approach posts like AdWords or display ads. The cropped image and small amount of text that's displayed in the initial thumbnail view have a massive impact on clicks. The ideal image size is 1200 by 900 pixels. Loading images is incredibly frustrating because the cropping of the thumbnail image is inconsistent. The crop is set to slightly above vertical center, but it's not always in the same location. Check out these two examples. The same image was loaded to each, but the crop is different on each one. It gets even more frustrating. The thumbnail size is different between desktop and mobile. Here's the same image, and in fact the same post and you can see the desktop image is slightly larger than the mobile image. I've created a Google Post image cropping guide to help take the headache out of uploading posts and hoping that your text or important image elements don't get cropped out. Just head over to bit.ly slash posts image guide to download my PSD. You can also upload a video instead of a photo. In the thumbnail view, it shows as a still image with a play button and when clicked, the video starts to play. The video for posts have the same file size restrictions as videos for GMB, which is up to 30 seconds in length and 100 megabytes in size. Optimizing the text that shows in that thumbnail view can be difficult as well. Choosing the right post template is key. You wanna maximize your message in the small space that's available. Different templates allow for different amounts of visible text. You have the option to include a call to action or CTA button on your posts, and you should always use the button. If you're sharing a post to try to convert customers, you need a way to get those customers to your site to convert, so you need to use the button. Keep in mind though, using a CTA button results in less visible text in the thumbnail view. Even though the button shows at the bottom of the full text description, it shows as a link at the bottom of the thumbnail view, replacing the last line of text. The most common and the easiest to optimize post type is the what's new post. The thumbnail view will display four lines of text or about 100 characters. With the CTA button, you end up with three full lines of text, plenty of space to write something compelling. Event posts add an event title and a date range to the description. In the thumbnail view, the title shows on the first line and the date range shows on the second line. Since your CTA button shows on the final line, that means only a single line of your description will show. That's not always a bad thing though. These posts will stay live for the length of the date range that you enter, and with the ability to show a title isolated on the first line, event posts can be very effective. Offer posts are similar to event posts, with a title for the offer and a date range for the offer. Once you include the CTA button, a single line of the description is visible. 
Once the thumbnail is clicked, you have the option to include a coupon code, redemption methods, and even a disclaimer. The final post template is product posts, which include a product name and a price range. Once you include the CTA button, again, just a single line of the text description is visible. Pick the right template for what you're sharing. Upload an awesome image and write a compelling description, and you'll be able to attract customers who haven't even been to your website. You should also pay attention to the questions and answers section, which shows just below your address and phone number in your GMB profile. The Q&A section is a community feature where anyone can ask a question about your business and anyone can answer that question for you. Most businesses have no idea it's there or they don't pay attention to the questions that are asked, which means they're letting random people in the community answer the questions that are asked about their business. The questions have an upvote feature. If a question gets at least three upvotes, it will appear natively in your GMB panel instead of the standard link for questions and answers. If several questions get more than three upvotes, the question with the most upvotes will appear. Answers work on an upvote system as well. The answer with the most upvotes appears as the primary answer to the question. Businesses are allowed to ask their own questions, so you can upload your own questions and then answer them. Think of the most common questions you hear from customers. Those are the questions you need to ask yourself in the Q&A section. Think of it almost like a pre-site FAQ page. No one's gonna head to your site to read your FAQs, so get them loaded into your GMB profile. On mobile devices, when users start to type in a question, Google will auto-suggest answers based on past answers and customer reviews. Loading in your common questions helps you answer those questions as they're being asked. Pay attention to the answers as well. Make sure your answers have the most upvotes so they show as primary answers. If another answer overtakes yours, get a few employees or friends or family members to go upvote your answer. It's incredibly common to see questions asking for the business's phone number, even though the Q&A section is located directly under the phone number in the GMB profile, and even though customers could click through to the website to get the phone number. And many of the questions asked are leads. In a research project I conducted earlier this year, almost 40% of the questions asked out of over 600 questions were leads, and only three had been answered by the businesses. Ask your own questions, answer them, and upvote your answers so you control the conversation and make a better first impression with potential customers. That's it for lesson eight of the local SEO course. We hope you learned something awesome. If you've got any questions, feel free to tweet them to me directly at, at Greg Gifford or to the awesome team of pros over at the SEM Rush Academy at, at SEM Rush Academy. Don't forget to check out the next lesson on other signals that affect local rankings. And when you think you're ready, head over to the SEM Rush Academy page and take the test for this course so you can get officially SEM Rush certified in local SEO.